Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing an animated logo for Lamination the Documentary. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I actually know the guys that are putting together this documentary, and they are very close to being finished. They're actually doing a Kickstarter right now. There's about two weeks left, and they're just about hit their goal. So please go check it out. Donate if you can. And I've actually got a kind of a cool, not really a competition because everyone can win, uh, but something we can do as far as creating an animated logo and getting some Cinema Spice uh, merchandise because of that. So stay tuned for those details. I'll explain that after the tutorial. Now with this logo, what I wanted to do is animate it in such a way where you can learn lots of cool little skills and techniques that you can apply to pretty much any logo. And so I've got lots of little tricks that I'm going to go over this and just kind of talk about logo animation in general. Okay, so let's start by bringing in my Illustrator file. So right here I have the Illustrator file. I'm just going to drag it, drop it right into the project, brings up a window, and make sure you import it as composition. And I like to retain the layer sizes. Click OK. And then what this is going to do, it brings in a new composition. I've already have this set up to be 1920 by 1080. There's this all these different layers here. They're named. And then this one is colors. Um, this was included in case I wanted to change the colors around. But I think I'm going to keep it these same colors. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete that. First thing I want to do is add a new white solid to the background. I want to just put this on white. So that's Command Y or Control Y. We'll open a new solid. Give it a name. Background will do. Make sure it's comp size and white. And let's throw it down to the very bottom. Now when you're animating a logo, you want the logo to do most of the work. And so don't animate this in a way that doesn't fit with the logo. So this logo is very round, and so I'm going to do some rotating. And I've also got different layers kind of vertically. I've got the llama, nation, the documentary, and this line. And so it, it makes for an easy way to kind of animate just based on how the logo is put together. I also have these stars, and they make kind of good bookends. So that's a way I can also animate this nation part of the logo. First thing I want to do is this circle is split up into two pieces. And the way the Illustrator file was is that these are just separate pieces. I can move them around. And what I want is I want one continuous circle that I can use as a shape layer to kind of trace on. And so I'm going to create a new circle. Go to my, my ellipse tool. And let's go in and make a circle that's roughly the same size as the one there. That looks about right. And let's go into the ellipse and delete the fill because we don't need the fill. And you can see now it's not quite fitting how I want. So I'm going to line it up the best that I can. And it's a little bit large. So I'm going to try to center it over the circle. And then let's bring the uh, ellipse path down. Right there it's set at 704. Let's try something like 699. That's actually looking pretty good. Okay. Now that I have it aligned, I'm going to want to get rid of these top two layers, but not just yet, because I want this to be blocked out. I want it to look like the original logo. Right now, there's a line going through that, and I don't want that. So since the background is white, honestly, the easiest way is to add another white solid over top of this. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid. Let's make it white. Call this White Mask. And it's right over top of the circle, but the other ones are still on top. So what I'm going to do now is get my Pen Tool. And let's just go across. And I am just making a mask. So it cuts out and covers up just the spots that I want, just like that. So then if I come in here and take these top and bottom circles, I turn those off. Well, then it looks the same. I'm going to go ahead and just delete those. Let's take the circle, bring the opacity up to full. And now what we have here is a circle that looks just like the one before. And the reason why I'm doing that is I can come in here now. Let's come to the contents. And I'm going to add a trim path. And since this is a, a stroke of a circle, watch what happens. Adjust this trim path and have it just right on. Really cool. But let's wait to do that in a little bit. The first thing I want to do is animate this llama coming on, the llama word. 
And so while I'm animating that, I'm going to go ahead and hide everything else just so I can focus right on the llama. And so I want this to spin on. Let's go to about 12 frames. And I'm going to come into this, the transform, keyframe, the scale, and the rotation. Before I move anything, I'm going to move the, the anchor point. Right now it's a little bit high. I want it to be right about there, kind of the center of gravity of the word. So let's use my pan behind tool, which is this one right up here by the camera. Or if you just hit Y on the keyboard, it brings that up. And let's bring the anchor point to about right there. That's where I want everything to spin around. So let's go backwards in time towards the beginning. And let's have this rotate this way. And then scale down to zero. That's looking pretty good. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit more dynamic lifelike movement to this. And so I'm going to use a technique with the time displacement. And so in order to use that, I need to have a displacement map. So let's grab a new solid. Just Command Y, call it Displacement Map. OK, and let's put this below the Llama layer. And then to this, we're going to add an effect. Go to Generate, Gradient Ramp, and let's make it a radial ramp. Swap colors so the white is on the inside and the black is on the outside. And what I'm going to do is bring my beginning point to right in the middle and my end point to right around the end so it looks just about like that. Now if I hit U on the keyboard while I, I select the llama layer, I can see the keyframes. So what I want to do now is I want to keyframe in this effect the start and the end ramp. And if we go to the beginning right where we just see this coming on, then I'm going to bring the end ramp in. So I want it to grow with the llama just like that. Okay. Now I need to take this layer and pre-compose it so we can use it as a displacement map. So Command Shift C or Control Shift C and make sure you move all the attributes. If you don't move the attributes, it's not going to work. So displacement map comp. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to hide this for a second, is I do want to have this a little bit of an overshoot. So as it hits here at the end, I actually want this rotation to be maybe minus, let's go minus five. Go two frames forward, let's go three, two frames forward, minus two, two frames forward, 0.5, two frames forward, and then zero. So then as it rotates in, it kind of jiggles a little bit. Okay, so now that I have this displacement map that kind of follows, what I'm going to do is on this llama layer, let's go to effect, time, time displacement. Now go in here to the layer, switch that to this the displacement map comp, and it doesn't show anything because I need to turn on this continual rasterization layer. And then what it's going to do is it's going to do something a little crazy. What I need to do is make some adjustments. So right here where it says one, let's go point zero say seven five. And then with this time resolution, we need to crank that up really high. Let's go about three thousand. Okay, and what you can see here is as it's rotating, it's rotating things a little bit more dynamically. The outer edges kind of bend and warp a little bit, and they just kind of have a cool look to it. And so that's using the time displacement. And how that works, it's using the grayscale to determine how far back to the displaced time. So it's, it's displacing it by 0.075 seconds based on the white or the black value. So the darker it is, the more displacement, the whiter, the less displacement. And then the time resolution is basically how crisp and how nice the edges are going to look. So we can go ahead and hide that layer. You know what? I'm going to just bring it down to the bottom so it's out of the way. Now next, let's go in and let's do the stars. So what I want to do is I want these stars to kind of wipe out. So in order for them to wipe out, I need them to be centered to begin with. So at this point, I'm just kind of timing it. Llama comes in, and the nation should come right after that. So llama nation, and at that point, so I'm just playing it, and then I hit spacebar to stop it. This is where I want the word nation to be appeared and these stars to be out. So let's go into the stars, highlight them both, hit P, and keyframe the position. Let's go in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them into the center. Take this first position, 
and let's minus say 200 and that brings the star in and then the second one I'm going to go to the end and then plus 200 and it gives me a closer idea of where they're at. I'm going to go ahead and hide the word nation and then from here if I bring up my rulers R I can just stick one right in the middle and then I can kind of see where the middle is. It's easier to see where the middle between the two are if you if they're closer together. So let's take this and then I'm just going to bring it in and the other one so they're right on top of each other. Now what I want to do is I want to move these together as one. So let's bring in a new null object. So layer new null object. Let's call this star control. I'm going to take both the left and right star layer and parent it to the star control. Now I want these stars to maybe be spinning as they move out. Um, I also want this guide to be gone so I can actually take this and move it off to the side and then it moves out of the way. If I hit command R it'll get rid of my rulers. So let's take both the right and left star, hit R and it'll bring up the rotation. I'm going to keyframe those. If I hit then U it's going to bring up all of my keyframes for those layers and I can see where they end at. So I can then go here and let's have these rotate two full rotations and then this bottom one can be negative two rotations. Maybe to kind of add a little bit more variety to this, I'm going to take these rotations and bring them over just a few more frames afterwards. Let's highlight them, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's take a look at that movement. Okay. Now that I've got them connected together with this star control, let's have the star kind of pop on. So I'm going to keyframe, scale, rotation, and let's keyframe the position. Let's go back a few frames. Now, when I scale this, it's not quite in the right spot. So I'm going to bring in my rulers. I like to use rulers as guides to kind of just remember where some of my objects are. And then let's scale this up just a little bit. And bring the position up. And maybe have it rotate a little bit. So then what I'm going to do is right here where the beginning of my keyframes are, I'm going to take my left and my right star, and I'm going to hit Option or Alt, and then hit my left bracket, and it's going to cut that. So then what that's going to essentially do is make it look like it pops on. And it's a little fast, so I'm going to take both the left and the right star and the star control, and I can just move these a couple of frames. That's looking pretty good. Now that I have the stars on there, let's go ahead and use that to control the wipe of the nation. Right there. Another thing that you'll notice is the star is a little bit fuzzy, and that's because I don't have the rasterize button on. And I just turned that on there. So that's the star little sunburst in the layer. So let's go to the, the layer, the nation layer. Let's grab my rectangle tool. And I'm going to just mask it all out. And then let's keyframe the mask path. Frame by frame. I want the keyframe to start right there as the stars start to split apart. And go frame by frame until it's at the end. And then just move the mask out. Okay, let's take a look at that. Looking pretty good. So the next layer that we're going to work with is going to be the line. And I just want this to kind of fade and move into place. So I'm playing through the animation until I, you just got to kind of feel it until I feel, yeah, that's where it needs to be. So right about there. Um, I'm looking at about one second and four frames come to the line. Let's go into the transform, opacity, scale, and position. We're going to keyframe those. Move up to about right there. Unlink the scale. And bring the first value in. Position up to about there. And opacity down to zero. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
Now, next after the line is the documentary, the word. Now, I'm going to do something kind of cool with this. This is another trick that I want to show you. This is a vector object. This just came from Illustrator. So if I right click on this, I can create shapes from a vector layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it creates this whole thing, but as a shape layer. That's pretty cool. I'm going to bring that down to where the old one is and just delete the old one because I don't need it. So let's come into the contents and you can see all these different groups. But what I want to do is just add one effect to this and it's called trim paths. So this is a very easy way to create some dynamic movement to some text that looks pretty cool, but it's really easy to do. See, as I just trim the path, look how cool that looks. So I'm going to use this to animate on these words. So keyframe end at 0%. Let's move forward in time and bring that up to 100%. Stretch that out a little bit longer. And that is how you animate that. Okay, and then the last thing is we've got that circle. So let's open, let's turn that circle back on. And also remember this white mask. Now with this white mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a track mat. And what a track mat does is it uses the layer right above it to create a, an opacity layer on this circle layer. So if I go to the track mat setting, I just switch the toggles and modes till I have this. And on the circle, not on the white mask, switch that to alpha mat inverted. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut out. It's going to cut out. So if I move this background, you can see now I don't just have a white layer kind of over that. It actually used that layer to cut out on top of that circle. Pretty cool. So now we need to just time up this circle. And probably about right here is where I want it to start drawing on. So let's go to the circle. Remember the trim paths. And now one thing is I want this circle to start right on this point right there. And so I just do set the end to 99 so I can see where the point is. And let's offset this. About right there. Okay, looking good. Bring the end down to zero, keyframe that, and let's go forward a few seconds and bring it up to 100. So before we add the motion blur, let's see what this looks like. Looking pretty good. All right, let's make sure we have the motion blur on all of the layers that are animating and let's go ahead and turn on the motion blur and check it out. Okay, so there it is with the motion blur. I usually like to save the motion blur for the end because it takes a lot longer to render these things out. And now let's talk about the competition. Now I use the word competition loosely because everyone who enters will win. This is what I want you to do. In the description of this video, there is some links. So one of the links is to the Kickstarter campaign for Lamination. And the other one is to where you can download this Illustrator file for this logo. And what I want you to do is I want you to this weekend. So Monday morning, I'm going to stop everything when I get into work, which is about 9, 930 um, mountain time. I'm in the mountain time zone. So before Monday morning, I want you to animate this logo. So this is a weekend project, something you can do. Animate this logo, put it on your YouTube channel or put it somewhere online and then link to it in a comment on this video. So everyone who does that, I will give you a $5 coupon worth of $5 worth of anything at Cinema Spice. So you can download any of the items that are $5 for free, or you can use it to purchase a larger item at a discount. So that's anyone that does that. So I'm trying to spread the word about Lamination and the Kickstarter and get more people um, to see about this because it's a really cool documentary. They're doing a really good job. I'm very impressed with their filming and the storytelling and I've got to see lots of the behind the scenes footage. So it's, it's gonna be a really kind of a cool documentary. So that's what I want you to do. I want to see you guys animate this logo, what you can come up with. You can change the colors around. There's that color palette that is included in the file and just make sure you put a link to it on this video as a comment. And that's who I know is have done this. And so everyone who has a link to their animated logo will get that $5 from Cinema Spice everyone i'm not going to draw names it's for everyone so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions again you can put those in the comments as well i hope you learned some good stuff i really like some of these techniques for animating logos and hopefully it's things that you can apply to 
all sorts of logos, not just the Lamination logo. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.